welcome back to my channel. So today's video, we are going to be doing a DIY that I actually did for my new apartment. If you're new to my channel, you probably don't know, but I recently moved to Vermont and I'm going to be remaking my whole entire apartment. And part of that is this DIY. So before I came here, my dad and I made this dining room table. It is absolutely stunning. I am obsessed with it and it matches the vibe that I'm going for for this apartment. Super industrial, rustic looking. So I filmed it all for you and I'm gonna walk you through the process of how I made this dining room table. So we actually started off with a base that we already had. The base we used was actually a desk that we previously had and didn't really use anymore. It was up in the attic, so we just took the top of it off, used the base, and then made the tabletop. So to make the tabletop, all you'll need are four eight-foot long boards. We ended up cutting them down to seven feet, but depending on how long you want your dining room table, we decided to go with seven feet, so we got eight-foot boards. You'll also need some smaller scrap boards to use as your cross pieces. We used the Minwax Early American Stain as well as the Minwax Water-Based Poly, some sandpaper, and then some tack cloth. So let's just get into making the table. So like I said, we started off with the base. My dad just basically kind of reinforced the base to make sure it was sturdy. He added a crossbar at the bottom because typically a desk wouldn't have that middle piece, but it worked for a table. So we added that wood board and actually adds to the table so much it ties in the top board kind of with the bottom. We stained them the same color and it looks really nice. So he just kind of reinforced it and made sure it was going to be a sturdy base and then it was time to make the tabletop. So like I said, we started with eight foot boards, but we decided to cut them down to seven feet just because it felt like it would fit in the space better. So my dad cut 11 inches off of one side and then one inch off the other just to have a fresh cut on both sides. And we did this with all four boards. Next we had to measure the inside of the base to see how long we had to make those cross pieces to make sure it fit super snug in there and it didn't, you know, move around or slide around. That was going to be our support piece. Next we had to find kind of the center of the table to make sure we had those cross pieces in the right spot. So we found the middle of the boards and then also centered those boards on the center of the base. There's a lot of stuff that goes into this that I actually had no idea that we had to do until, you know, we got into it. So you guys can learn from us doing it so you don't have to learn as you go. So once we got those four cross pieces laid out and figured out where we needed them, we drew a line down the center of each of the cross pieces so we knew exactly where to screw the nails into. So next it was time to drill the holes from the cross piece into the actual tabletop, which was really scary because one, we didn't want to drill through the board because then there would be a hole in the top of the table. And then two, you didn't want to move the cross piece mid drilling between drilling and screwing it in because then you're messing up the holes. <laughs> We decided to go with two screws in each board just so that there was no bowing and we made them so that it was like right where they meet near each other. And this took like probably the longest because there was four cross pieces with like eight screws in each of them. So that definitely took the longest and was probably the hardest part of this whole DIY. So after we were done with that, we decided to turn it all around and see what it would look like. And then to make sure the tabletop was secure to the base, we just took an old belt, like super easy. You could use any sort of fabric or belt or whatever and looped it from the tabletop under the base to the tabletop and drilled it in so that the tabletop didn't like move if you like put your weight on it. This definitely isn't needed, but it is just an extra safety precaution for your table. Next, this is the fun part where we got to like distress the table. So we just used different chains, hammers, mallets, anything that would make a cool mark. We were literally just hitting the table with it. The chains definitely look really cool. My dad also just took like a little, I don't even know what to use, and made little dots, like little holes all around the table to make it look like 
there was a bug that had eaten away at the wood or just kind of like made it look older. And after we got the stain on it, those looked really great. So definitely suggest those. Just hitting it with a hammer, those looked great. We had like a long iron bar and just whacked it with that. That one looked good because it was just like a straight line. There's never too many distress marks, so yeah. All right, so now it's time to stain. Like I said, we used the Minwax stain in Early American. I saw this on Lone Fox's channel. He uses this stain all the time, and it looks so beautiful on every project he does. So I decided to use that on this table, and it looks amazing. It's the exact color I was looking for. So very happy I went with this one. We started on the bottom side just in case we messed up, just to give it a little test to see how much stain we had to put, and just, you know, we didn't want to start on the top and mess up. So we did the bottom first, it looked great. Make sure you just work it in really well so that there's no like drips or like puddles. You wanna make sure it's really rubbed in. We decided to go board by board instead of working our way down just so that it blended easier because it does dry quickly. So we wanted to make sure we were moving fast and efficiently. Out my sight, cause then I would have no light and someone else would find your beauty new. So after we did the coat of stain, it was time to poly. Poly takes like at least three coats and you have to sand between each poly. So this definitely took probably the longest, but it's definitely worth it. You need to do those three coats, at least three coats. So basically the process was take the paintbrush, poly the whole table, let it dry, sand it away, then vacuum up all the sawdust, wipe it down with a tack cloth to make sure you got all of the sawdust away, and then poly again. And you keep doing that until you're done and then you're left with your final coat of poly. It just gives you a really nice smooth surface and since it's like gonna be used a lot, you need that poly coat or else dust is going to stick to it. And yeah, you just need a top coat. And that's it for the table. I love the way it turned out. It looks beautiful in the apartment. I'm gonna show you some finished shots here, but we recently started our David Dobrik puzzle and it's on the table. So you're gonna have a little David Dobrik puzzle on the final shots. Did you turn off the lights in the telephone? Telephone in the telephone. I really hope you guys liked the way it turned out. If you did, please like this video and subscribe down below. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of home makeover videos on my channel. I just moved into an industrial style loft in Vermont and it's so beautiful and I can't wait to make it over. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Come out, Virginia, what you're waiting for. Waiting for